Hello everybody, welcome back to the PC Final Frontier YouTube channel. Today we're going to discuss about the quadriceps angle and its implications. Now to define quadriceps angle, it is an angle that is between the ASIS and the center of the patella and a line drawn between the center of the patella and tibial tuberosity. Now, why is this angle important and why um, do we look at the quadriceps angle in any lower extremity mile um, alignments is what we're going to um, review in the next few slides. Before that, let's catch up on the normal ranges. Now, normal ranges between the males and the females differ a little bit, as you can see, um, because of females having a wider pelvis, um, which is why the females have a little bit of higher degree of allowance. Now, abnormal ranges are anything above 20 degrees. Now, what is the significance of that is that if there is a Q angle, which is more obtuse, which is more greater than 20 degrees, there is chances of displacement or what we say sub subluxation of the patella, which is usually in the lateral direction. I am going to show you here in the picture where if this angle is increased, that means if the quadriceps angle has, has increased more than 20 degrees, there is chances of lateral patella subluxation or displacement. Now, what is the significance of a Q angle? The Q angle is the tendency of the patella to contract or move laterally because of the pull of the quadriceps muscle here. And what does it do? Why do we measure it? Because when there is abnormal Q angle, there could be patellofemoral joint pathologies that, that, can be, that can be diagnosed. And why do we need this Q angle to be in the ranges that are mentioned um, in the slides before? That is because when the patella has a Q angle, which ranges in those normal ranges, then there is equal degrees of distribution of pressure within all the movements of knee flexion, where it, it could be at zero degrees or it could be at 90 degrees or it could be at full range of motion. The pressure distribution throughout the patella is uniform and which is very important to not have the patellofemoral pathologies. A clinical significance of this Q angle is that you may see excessive genuvalgum or knock knees, as you can see here, these two are close together um, with increased Q angle again here. With increased angle, you will see genuvalgum in the knees. Now, what happens, we talked about the knee. What happens at the hip and the ankle? It could start from the hip and lead to the knee and ankle or it could start at the knee and lead to impairments above and below. Whichever it may be, if we go from top to bottom, what happens is in the hip, when there is coxa vera, meaning there is increased femoral antiversion and internal rotation that leads to increased Q angle here, which leads to genuvalgum and tibial external rotation. There is genuvalgum and tibial external rotation that is to be remembered, which leads to compensatory overpronation or toe in in the talocrural joint. Now, this is very important to remember because the malalignments follow each other in terms of compensation to compensate each other and still be stable on that lower extremity. This is a great picture here that gives all the other conditions that could take place because of those compensations that happen at either of these joints. I hope it was self-explanatory and you enjoyed this lecture.